Isn't the name of Jesus powerful? Isn't it amazing? For the last three years, we have experienced miracle after miracle on these grounds. We have seen the lame walk, the blind see, we've seen the deaf hear, we've seen witchcraft destroy. The amazing thing about our God is that he never stops working. He will never stop working. Even if we stop coming, he won't stop working. So many miracles have happened. We can't even count them. We can't. We have a container full of crutches. We had so many crutches, we didn't know where to put them. And what's going to happen tonight is that we're not just here for a show. There's some of you that need to get healed. Some of you that God is going to touch. There's some of you that came here with something and God's going to give it to you today. Here at Miracle Center, we believe. We, we believe in ministering love to a hurting world. And here, you don't have to believe to belong. You can belong here before you believe. Because I know and I serve a God. That right before my eyes when my sister had cancer and the doctor sent her home and told my parents, don't spend any more money, she's not going to make it. I saw God step in and she spoke at the beginning of this worship experience. A lot of people don't know this, but my parents, before they had me, I'm the firstborn, they tried to have kids and they didn't. So they conceived one time and my mom had a miscarriage. There are supposed to be four in us in our family, but there are three. When the devil said, no, you can't have kids, Jesus came and said, yes. The people next to you may not know this story, but I wanted one person to come here and share with you. I think they're getting ready, but as they get ready, I'll share this. In the book of Matthew, how many of you know the woman with the issue of blood? The woman with the issue of blood, she, she suffered this for 12 years. 12 years. She was constantly bleeding. She spent all her money going to physicians. She would wrap herself with every cloth she had. And finally, she heard, there's a man coming into town. People get healed. The cripples see the lame walk. As you've just heard the song, he's coming into town and the miracles will happen. So the woman said, I'm gonna go. I don't need to see him. I just need to touch. I don't even need him to look my way. He doesn't have to know my name. I just need to touch the hem of his garment. And this, I know many people have preached this, but to me what happened was this. When Jesus was walking, there were thousands of people. As like all of you are right now, if the cameras can pan to all the people out in the crowd, all of you were right next to each other and Jesus was in the middle and all those people were brushing against him. Some were blind, some were sick, some had all kinds of diseases, some were lepers, rubbing and bumping against Jesus and his disciples. But you know what's funny? You want to know what's funny? The Bible doesn't record them getting their miracle. But they were bumping next to the King of Glory. But they didn't get healed. But this woman, this one woman who knelt down and said, if I just grab. You see, you can be in the presence of God right now. You can be in the presence of God for, with God for forever. 
and nothing changes if you don't surrender get down and say god i i, I may not, i don't need pastor robert to call my name today but i just need i just give give me i don't care what they think of me but just give give me a little bit and that woman got her healing and not only that while jesus was walking he stopped the bible says jesus felt the power leave him the woman had so much faith that her healing in that moment didn't require jesus to say yes she she grabbed it and took it so today we know that Jesus' name is powerful. The only thing we need to do is grab it and take it. Because all those people around Jesus at that time missed the anointing. They missed the anointing. And they missed the healing power of God. Our God never fails. Our God never fails. And as he turned around to that woman, this is what amazed me in that story. He said, who touched me? And right now the crowd had stopped. Everybody's most likely looking. I can imagine it and see it now. They're looking and watching her. And she stands up and says, it was me. And Jesus turned and said, woman, your faith has healed you. You have been made whole go that that one thing some of how many of you are sick you came here you're sick you know a relative that's sick you're dealing with something you're suffering from something wow if you could see the hands that i see tonight we don't just want healing tonight we're demanding that jesus makes us whole everything that's missing everything that's gone everything that's not there we are a people we are a generation that's hurting the drug rate in Kampala is beyond what we can see and I know there are people out there who say that young people are lost that the youth is nothing do you understand the people that led you in worship today are between not are between literally the ages of 16 and 18 those are the ones that led you in worship young people don't ever let anybody tell you that God can't use you because God can use them he can use you I serve a God who has never failed me. I may have thought that he was late, but he was right on time. I may not have been perfect, but God was. I just want to say that if you're here and you're lost, and that you're broken, in that you're hurting or maybe you don't even believe in Jesus today is your chance right now is your moment you can get healing you can get freedom you can get peace and I know that God will heal you because remember like that woman some of you don't need a pastor to touch you. Some of you just need to go grab the hem. Whether that means, it means maybe I need to just push through some of these people and come to the front. May, maybe it means where I am, I need to get on my knees. I won't share a testimony. Um, a lot of people, know, when you get to know me closely, you know I'm a person who doesn't care what a lot of people think. So I'm going to tell you as it is. 
my dad is a pastor and my parents are pastors, but that doesn't mean we don't suffer and have problems too. So through about four years ago, I think it was actually five years ago, I came to a point where I almost took my own life. And one thing that I've remembered from all the sermons I've attended of my father, my, fa my dad did not say, Robert, I'll always be there for you. My father said, God, God, Jesus will always be there. He will always be there. And I didn't understand it. So there's a bridge in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, woke up, I walked up to it my leg over the other side grabbed my other leg put it over the other side and I was gonna jump there was no water because you see the spirit of suicide is what it is a spirit and in that moment Jesus himself was there and I want to tell you something that I've never shared but somebody somebody's here struggling with the same thing while I was holding back with both hands, this is what happened, I let go. I've never shared this with anybody, I let go. And I felt hands around me say, my son, no, not today, not today. He pulled me back and I started crying. There were no cars passing. And I later got on the phone with my best friend's father and he came and we talked. Two days later, I'm falling asleep and I can't sleep, but then the presence of God comes into the room. And he says this, no matter how many children are out there, no matter how many people are out there, I may have saved you, but the devil is att att attempting to take someone tomorrow. And he said, the way you break the spirit of suicide is you surrender your heart to God. You surrender your heart and you're open. And here, we believe in that. One of the singers who sang for you has a powerful testimony and I want you to hear it. God is not finished. He's not. We may have had revival for three years, but I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. So Queen. Praise God, everyone. One thing I want you to know is Jesus loves you. You know, in his word, he says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And it's actually true. Many of us are out here. We feel like we have no purpose. We have no vision in any way at all. And we feel like there's nothing more to life than wasted. But I'm here to tell you, no matter who you are, what skin color you are, where you come from, Jesus loves us all. When he sent his son to die for us, he didn't send him to die for the righteous only. He sent his son to die for you and me. So every time you make a decision, every time you think you're so down, there's nothing more to do with your life. Remember, he loves you. I just have something really small to share. I'm 16. Yeah, and um, I want to thank God because he's been my father all these 16 years. Hallelujah. I want to thank God so much for the mother that he gave me. 
She has been so strong enough to stand for the both of us. But it's all because of Jesus. If my mother wasn't a believer, if my mom didn't know who God was, I'd probably be dead. And her too, most probably. You know, when people see us on stage, people see us on TV, wow, they have perfect lives. Trust me, you don't know what happens behind these curtains. And that's why I want you to know, no matter situation you're in, we only have God. By the time my mom was delivering me, she technically had no one by her side, no one. Nobody but God. And because she knew that, she understood who she was in Christ. She knew her identity and the identity her child would have in Christ. That's why we are here today. I just urge you all, don't give up, don't lose hope. Even that last bit of faith, it helps. Trust me, it does. The reason I love my mom so much and talk about her, she's a single mom that has done it all by herself, with God by her side. So you out there and you're a single mother, don't use it as a weakness let it be your strength because there's that man behind you there is that being behind you that keeps you going that tells you i have you and his name is god so let's have faith children of god however broken you may be to your last pieces just know that Jesus is Lord and he loves you. So tonight, as we worship God, just surrender everything. Your heart, your mind, your everything. And let him use you. Thank you. And as we go into this next part of worship, those of you who are watching on TV, and online and those of you who are here today I want to let you guys know and I want to let this, everybody here know that the giving that you give this is where it goes this is where it goes these kids are not here just because of us they're here because of you they're here because of you and because you are faithful and because you partner with us and them we cannot do any of this without you. And we love you. We love you so much. And those of you online, we want to say we are thankful for your time and your presence with us. And let's enjoy this next time of worship. We love you guys and be blessed. 